Hi everyone. Hope you are doing very well. Mm, this is a new video series based on the respiratory system, and uh, today's topic is a solitary pulmonary nodule. I'm Dr. Shreeful Halim, and uh, in this video lecture, I will uh, give you an idea of the general approach to a solitary pulmonary nodule. So I will first kick off the discussion by presenting a case, followed up by a set of differential diagnosis, and then I will talk about how to differentiate between a benign versus a malignant pulmonary nodule. And obviously, I will tell uh, the approach to different types of situations uh, in detail. Without further ado, let's get started. So this is our case. A 24-year-old male is undergoing a pre-employment checkup. As part of investigation, a chest x-ray is done and it shows a small nodule in the upper lobe of the left lung, which is about 15 millimeter in size. It does not give any history of any respiratory symptoms such as cough, chest pain, shortness of breath, or weight loss, appetite changes. He is a non-smoker and there is no family history of cancer. Okay, let's see the x-ray. Here is the x-ray and uh, you can clearly see the small nodule in the left upper zone of the lung, which is marked by a black box. So that is a nodule. Now, uh, what should be our basic approach? We should first consider a set of differentials, and there are two broad categories. Although this might be a benign lesion, our first goal should ex should be excluding malignancy, and uh, it can be a bronchogenic carcinoma, which is a primary lung cancer, or it could be a metastasis. Among the benign lesions, there are multiple possibilities. It could be an infectious granuloma, such as tuberculoma, or a fungal infection. For instance, if a patient comes from an Asian background, especially if uh, he or she is Indian or Bangladeshi, we would consider that um, might be a case of tuberculoma. But if the patient is from United States, residing in areas which are endemic for histoplasmosis, such as Mississippi, then we might consider the patient to, to be having histoplasmosis. There are other differentials, such as localized pneumonia, but in that case, the patient would have fever, cough, which is productive of sputum, which is often rusty, if streptococcal, shortness of breath, and chest pain. In case of lung abscess, the patient would have chills and rigors and a swinging rise of temperature. The other differentials include pulmonary infarct. In that case, the patient would have had um, a history of uh, prolonged sitting or a condition that predisposes him uh, to develop deep venous thrombosis, but he didn't have them and uh, he didn't give any history of leg pain or leg swelling, and even no history of uh, palpitation, shortness of breath, chest pain. So it uh, reasonably excludes pulmonary infarct. Uh, the other differentials are hematoma, adenoma, arteriovenous malformation. Um, I think uh, those are the most likely differentials in this case because uh, they are often asymptomatic, so there could be uh, one of them, maybe hematoma, which is a disorganized mass of tissue, adenoma, a benign tumor, arteriovenous malformation, a malformation that has both arterial and venous components. And uh, oviginous granulomatosis is a very distant possibility. 
if he had Weigener's granulomatosis, then probably he would have upper respiratory tract symptoms that involves nose, ear, or sinuses. He would have hematuria, which he doesn't have, and uh, he might have some systemic symptoms such as uh, fever, uh, arthralgia, and skin purpura. But all of those are absent, which leaves us to believe that this might be one of those benign lesions, or it might be a cancer. Who knows? Uh, before going to further discussion, let us define solitary pulmonary nodule. It's very obvious from the name, but let's expand the definition. Solitary means single, so it's a single lesion. It may be well circumscribed or sometimes poorly circumscribed. And um, a nodule is uh, generally rounded in size, um, rounded in shape, and uh, it must be less than three centimeter in diameter. And whenever a uh, lesion is more than three centimeter in diameter, we would call it a mass. And uh, it must have no associated abnormalities such as lymph, lymph adenopathy in the hyalur region or mediastinal region. So those are the important defining points of a solitary pulmonary nodule. And as we have mentioned previously, our first task is to differentiate the nodule uh, if it's a benign lesion or benign nodule versus if it's a malignant nodule. So here is a list of uh, clinical characteristics that suggests malignancy. Obviously, if the patient is older, there is a higher probability of having a malignant lesion. And actually, it's a fifth in patients who are over 50 years, there is a 50% risk. And it's quite uncommon for uh, younger. History of smoking um, is one of the most important history to take. And the number or frequency of smoking and the duration of smoking corresponds to the risk of developing malignancy. If there is a history of cancer in brother or father or mother, uh, so first degree relatives, then it increases the risk further. There are some other factors. Um, for example, uh, if someone is exposed to um, carcinogenic substances such as asbestos, silica, uranium, radon, etc., they also increases the chance of having malignancy. Obviously, someone having malignancy would have weight loss, and a history of uh, past malignancy could suggest a new malignancy or a metastasis. And here is a list of uh, radiographic characteristics of malignant lesions. Obviously, the, large, the, the larger the size, the higher the risk of being malignant. So if it's more than 20 millimeters, it's high risk. If it's uh, between 8 to, to 20 millimeters, it's of moderate risk. And if it's less than 8 millimeters, the risk is very low. And there are some radiographic appearance, such as low density, air bronchograms, inhomogeneous lesion, ground glass kind of appearance, which are associated with a high uh, chance of being malignant. If the lesion is irregular, then it's also a bad sign. And uh, I think uh, this uh, points about calcification is very important, also sometimes confusing, because we often learn that uh, calcification is a feature of malignancy. For instance, um, we always learned some of our body, which is a concentric calcification um, is a feature of malignancy involving thyroid glands and sometimes lung, sometimes uh, ovary and sometimes brain or meninges. But in case of uh, lung cancer, the basic idea here is the benign lesions are more likely to have calcification 
and the calcification in benign lesion is uh, very dense so it's very dense and it's located centrally or we can say it's concentric and it might have a shape of popcorn and it's always homogeneous calcification in contrast if it's a malignant lesion it's most likely to have no calcification whatsoever but if it does have some calcification it would probably be an eccentric and asymmetric pattern of calcification uh, so those two points are uh, very important to be noted uh, here um, are examples of CT scan of chest of a same patient so this is the lung window and this is the mediastinal window and uh, if we see the mediastinal window we could see a mass which is sorry a nodule which is around 16 millimeter in size so it seems that it has an intermediate probability of malignancy but if we um, see this in a lung window we observe that it's actually larger so it's about 20 millimeter in size and the borders are speculated uh, the size and the border and the inhomogeneous nature of this lesion suggests that it has a very high risk of developing malignancy or being a malignant lesion here is an important point for you to re remember which is the doubling time for malignant nodule it's about one month to one year so if a lesion is malignant we would expect it to be double in size within a year and now let's get back to our case in this young gentleman the best first step would be asking for a previous x-ray and uh, if we are able to find an x-ray which is at least two years old and we compare the x-rays we compare if uh, there is a lesion in the old x-ray just like the lesion in the new x-ray and if their appearances are similar would be thinking that this is a benign lesion and there is nothing to worry but if the old x-ray does not show any nodule but the nodule is only present in the new x-ray then we should be concerned and we would proceed further and here are the uh, general approach uh, systems so if it's a nodule which is around 8 to 30 millimeter in diameter would first assess the clinical probability of malignancy by using set criteria and there are many assessment models one of them is the model which is prescribed by the Mayo Clinic so we could use that and we could calculate the risk at a, as a percentage basis so the risk categories are very low low to moderate or high risk let's begin with a very low risk group which is less than 5% risk the only thing that we have to do is to follow up the patient with CT scan at uh, definite uh, intervals which is three months six months nine months 12 months and then 18 and 24 months so two year surveillance program and the CT scan would be a low dose and thin section and we would not we would not use any contrast if the lesion is of low or moderate risk then our assessment technique is uh, different we would actually do a bad scan so positron emission tomography using uh, fluorodeoxyglucose and uh, if the uptake of the glucose which is the tag glucose is low or there is no uptake then we'd consider it to be a very low risk lesion and we would follow up by CT scan uh, whereas if the lesion has an intense uptake or high activity we would consider it as a high uh, risk lesion and we would follow up with biopsy so it could be a trans thoracic biopsy or an endoscopic biopsy the last group which is the high risk group um, this group is uh, have, is not assessed by the way that uh, CT scan or PET scan. No, 
you don't do any CT scan or PET scan in this uh, patient the way we have done in the previous group. Rather, we'd consider it to be a malignant lesion and our ultimate goal would be resecting the lesion. And as we're approaching the patient as having a malignant lesion, we would um, thoroughly evaluate the patient clinically and also if needed, do the necessary investigations for staging. So we would actually stage the patient and after finding no metastasis, we would uh, resect the tumor with video assisted thoracoscopic surgery and uh, we might do a frozen section biopsy and that would give us an idea if the lesion is actually benign or malignant and we'd be able to uh, have a, a high area of tumor uh, we would be able to resect if it's malignant we would be able to resect properly and we would be able to have a tumor free or malignant cell free margin if we recap what we have already learned in the previous slide uh, first question is when to do CD follow-up obviously if the risk of malignancy is very low and there be they would be done in uh, certain intervals and if the risk is intermediate then we we'll do the PET scan and PET scan showing high metabolic activity suggests malignancy it requires biopsy there are two points to remember about the PET scan. Uh, there are some false positive cases. Uh, for example, if the patient has granulomatous disease such as tuberculosis, then uh, it might show a high metabolic activity. And sometimes PET scan could be false negative. Um, for example, in, in neuroendocrine tumors, it can be false negative. In that case, we might uh, do uh, a PET scan by using uh, 68 uh, gallium jotatec instead of uh, fluorodeoxyglucose. And after doing PET scan and uh, identifying the lesion as a high risk lesion, we we'll do a uh, bronchoscopic biopsy if it's a central lesion. And if it's a peripheral lesion, we'd we'll go for a PET or video assisted thoracoscopic biopsy. Here is an example of PET scan. This is the lung window and this is the mediastinal window. And we can obviously see the very high activity level of the tumor. So this is a tumor, this is a malignant nodule, and uh, here is the malignant nodule again. And the next step would be doing a bronchoscopic biopsy to confirm it and follow it, would follow it up by a resection. And uh, surgical removal is done as a first uh, line um, method, a first line approach if the lesion has a very high probability of being malignant and before removing the tumor we would do a clinical and radiological staging this is the end of our discussion thank you very much for watching the videos watching the video that i have uh, produced and uh, please please like and subscribe to my channel and I uh, recommend one of the other topics that you would like to have some videos on. And thank you very much again. Have a nice day.